So you guys asked for it. You wanted to see our Sabrent Thunderbolt 5 external SSD tested on the all new M4, M4 Pro and M4 Max, MacBook Pros and Mac Minis. So as you can see, I've got a full test setup right over here to show you exactly what the results are on each of these machines and tell you why you should probably consider picking up the Sabrin Thunderbolt 5 external SSD. Let's jump into it. Hello everyone, my name is Mike and here at Sabrin we love to make and talk tech. So if that's what you're into, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. So as you can see, I've got a few Macs right over here and all of them have different SSD and chip configurations. This is because Apple are known to change the speeds depending on what computer you end up buying. So I thought I would grab a selection of Macs so that we can give you some idea on the real world speed performances of each of these SSDs that are configured in each of these computers and then compare it to our external drive. So if we take a look at what's available, as you can see with the base model Mac mini, if you went for an SSD upgrade, the maximum that you can go for is the two terabyte, which costs a whopping $800. Now, if we take a look at the Mac mini with the M4 Pro chip, if we wanted to upgrade it from the 512 storage all the way up to four terabytes, for example, that's gonna cost you a whopping $1,200. And then if we take a look at our last machine, which is an 14 inch MacBook Pro, and this one here has the M4 chip. If you wanted to upgrade it all the way from a one terabyte drive to a four terabyte drive, again, that's going to cost you a whopping $1,000. Now, right now, our Thunderbolt 5 Extreme SSD is currently available for pre-order at the four terabyte size. And as you can see, the price of this drive is only just a hair under $600. So a huge saving depending on which configuration you go for. This drive is at the bleeding edge of technology and we are really pushing the limits of what's capable out of an external SSD. Now, just to be aware, we will be releasing this SSD in other sizes like two terabytes. So if you wanna go ahead and pick one of those up, then I suggest waiting. However, if you know that you need a four terabyte drive, then go ahead and pre-order today. So let me take a moment to show you how I'm doing the testing and then show you all the results. So right over here, I've got two Mac minis, one M4 and one M4 Pro, and I'm connecting this via a KVM just for easy switching. This KVM, for those interested, is the Sabrent Thunderbolt 4 KVM. And this allows me to switch the displays, as you can see over here, and have a keyboard and mouse connected and then with a single push of a button, I can switch between both systems really easily. If you wanna go ahead and pick up this KVM, I will have a link down in the description below. It's definitely worth picking if you've got two systems that you need to switch between and you don't wanna bother unplugging a whole bunch of cables to do so. And then lastly, I have a MacBook Pro 14 inch configured with the M4 Max chip. Now the Thunderbolt 5 drive that I'll be using, I'll be connecting directly to the Thunderbolt ports at the back of the Mac minis, as well as directly to the Thunderbolt 4, 5 ports on the MacBook Pro. So let's dive in and show you everything that we've got. So the first system here that we have is the M4 Mac mini, and this is the base model. Now the base model comes with 256 gigabytes of standard SSD storage. And as you can see, this is what we have configured here. So one thing that I just want to note is that the Mac mini with the base configuration doesn't have a Thunderbolt 5 port. It only has Thunderbolt 4. However, I wanted to show you the impressive speeds that you can expect to get with our Thunderbolt 5 drive connected up to the base model Mac mini. So the first test I'm going to be doing is the Blackmagic disk speed test. So what we're going to first do is we're going to select the target drive. So we'll just make sure that is selecting the internal drive. And in terms of the stress test, we'll set it at two gigabytes and we'll press start. Now, as you can see, we are getting write speeds of around 2,400, just under 2,400. And then in terms of the read speeds, we're getting around 2,000, just under 2,900. Now, let's go ahead and select the, in, uh, the external Thunderbolt 5 drive from Sabrum. And we're gonna start that again. And there you go. So on the right, 
and then we've got the read. So we'll stop that just there. So as you can see, we've got 2,000, just under 3,000 megabytes per second on the right and just over 3,000 megabytes per second on the read. So again, let's run that again, just so that you guys can see. So again, just under 3,000 megabytes on the right and just over 3,000 on the read. So the second test that we're going to run is the amorphous disk mark. Now, let's do an internal test. So again, set to two gigabytes and using the internal drive, we're going to start the test and we'll let that run for a moment. So I'll just speed it up so that you can see that the test is running, but you don't need to wait the whole video for it to do the test. And there you go, these are the results. So on the read, we've got 2,800 and on the right, we've got 2,300. So now let's test the external Thunderbolt 5 drive. So we're gonna select the volume, we're gonna choose, and then we're gonna run the test again. And again, I'll speed this up for saving some time. And there you go, the speed test is all done. And as you can see, we're seeing big improvements on the read and again, big improvements on the right as well. So on the read, uh, over 3,400 megabytes per second and on the right, nearly 2,800 megabytes per second. Seeing these kind of numbers in a Thunderbolt 4 port is absolutely incredible and is demolishing the base Mac Mini. So as you can see, if you're gonna pick up the base model M4 Mac Mini, then I would say go ahead and save yourself the $800 that it costs you to upgrade to just the two terabyte and pick up our Thunderbolt 5 external SSD that comes in four terabytes, so actually cheaper and double the storage, but you actually get faster speeds than the base model Mac mini with the standard configuration of the 256 SSD. So that's super impressive, but let's move on to the M4 Pro Mac mini as that does have a Thunderbolt 5 port so we can really push the limits of this drive. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna push the button on our Sabrin KVM and we'll wait a second for it to switch over. And there you go. We now have the Apple M4 Pro and this one here is configured with the 512 internal SSD. So the first test we'll be running similar to before is the Blackmagic Design disk speed test and we're gonna do the same again. So we're gonna select the internal drive to begin with, just to see a baseline. So we're gonna start the speed test. And obviously we're seeing a bit faster speeds as you can see. So if we just stop this test at the moment, so 4,133 megabytes per second on the right and on the read, just over 5,000 megabytes per second. So. Now let's move over to the external drive. So we're gonna select the external drive, press open, and we're gonna start the test again. And we've got the right and we've got the read, perfect. So on the right, as you can see, we're getting 5,000, just over 5,000 megabytes per second. And on the read, we're just touching 5,000 megabytes per second. So these are really impressive numbers. And then the next test we'll be running again is the amorphous disk mark. So again, selecting the internal drive and we'll start the test and I'll just fast forward it so you don't have to wait for the test to complete. And there you go, the test is complete. So we're just seeing just under 5,500 on the read uh, megabytes per second. And then on the right, we're seeing just under 4,500 megabytes per second so very impressive numbers for an internal drive. Now let's check out our Thunderbolt 5 drive that's external. So we're gonna select that and we're gonna run the test. And again, I'll speed it up and wait for the results. And there you go. So the test has been completed. And as you can see, our external Thunderbolt 5 drive is incredible. So on the read, we're seeing over uh, 6,200 megabytes per second on the read. That's just phenomenal. And then we're seeing on the right, 4,882. So again, these numbers are beating the internal of the base M4 Pro Mac Mini. So those are the numbers for the SSD test of the base model 
M4 Pro Mac Mini. And as you can see, our external drive really holds up. So now let's move on to a larger capacity SSD from Apple to see how it performs and how it compares to our external Thunderbolt 5 drive. So let's jump into the MacBook Pro. So I've got the Sabrin Thunderbolt 5 drive just over here and I'm just gonna plug it in to the MacBook Pro. And just so that you guys are aware, this is the Apple M4 Max with the two terabyte internal SSD. So the first test that we're gonna run is the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. So we're gonna select the internal drive so we'll do it the same as before, as you can see, and make sure it's at two gigabytes. And let's do the stress test. So we're seeing nearly 7,000 on the right, and then on the read, 5,200 megabytes on there. Now let's select our external drive. So we'll select that just over here and make sure it's at two gig, as you can see. And then we'll start that again and we're seeing over 5,000 on the right and over 5,000 on the read. So really, really impressive numbers. And now let's do the amorphous disk test. So again, we're gonna do two gigabytes and then the internal drive. So I'm gonna start that. And again, fast forward and let's see what the results are. And there you go, the test is complete. And as you can see, we're getting just under 5,800 on the read. And then on the right, uh, just over 1, 000, uh, 7,100 megabytes per second. So now let's test the external drive. So we'll select the new volume just there. We'll press choose. And then let's start that and we'll see what the results are. And there you go, the test is complete. And as you can see, we are getting read speeds of over 6,250 megabytes per second. And on the right, we are seeing nearly 4,700 megabytes per second. So as you can see, for that $600, that was a really tough race between the two. And can I just say, isn't it impressive that an external drive is reaching near enough internal drive speeds. Like that would have been unheard of five years ago. However, with Sabrin, you can get that kind of performance. Now, it's up to you whether it's worth that extra little bit of performance out of an internal drive. But for me personally, I would rather that extra two terabytes of capacity in my hands than having that little bit of bump in right performance. So that's only for you to decide whether that trade-off is worth it. However, for me, I'm definitely gonna be picking up the Thunderbolt 5 external SSD and throwing that in my bag. There are a number of benefits going for an external drive outside of price and capacity. The fact that you can take this drive anywhere you want and switch it between as many systems as you want. Let's say you've got a number of different Macs like the ones I have here. Rather than having to upgrade each and every single one, to have all the storage you need, well, you've got an external drive that you can move between systems and not just Mac systems, you can also use them on Windows systems too. Also, when you go ahead and upgrade your computer, let's say you're someone that upgrades every couple of years or even someone that might upgrade every year. Well, rather than having to spend that same amount every time you buy a new computer, well, you've bought one drive and it is going to be more than quick enough for most of your workloads. This drive is fantastic whether you're a video editor, photo editor, or music producer. This thing can handle it like butter. So if you want to go ahead and pre-order the 4TB Rocket Extreme Thunderbolt 5 external SSD, then I will have a link down in the description below. But I really hope that this video has given you a little bit of insight into the power of Thunderbolt 5 and for me personally, it is impressive to see these kind of numbers coming out of an external drive just through a single cable. And for those that were interested in our Thunderbolt 5 external drive, I really hope that this video has shown you a bit of a taste at least on the type of performance you should expect. But anyway, and that's it for today's video. If you've enjoyed this kind of video, then please make sure to smash that like button. 
And also hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.